All right, so let's go ahead and make the array All right, so uh, for our options. So you can see how this would easily translate into an array, all right, where we've got a name here that corresponds with an address here. So we can think of this as some different ways of uh, building it. Let's come up um, and before the form, let's create a PHP tag. And inside of that PHP tag, we'll go ahead and create an array. And let's just call it links. And we'll make it equal on array. And because it's going to be an associative array, I would like to go ahead and, and spread the, um, the syntax out so it's not on one line. It'll be easier to see. So the key, let's just go ahead and, and do a really simple um, uh, really simple syntax here so that it's easy to copy and paste them. And then let's say that I know that the value is going to always be uh, an HTTP address. So let's do HTTP colon slash slash, and then it could be some, uh, .com, okay? And then something will go here. And the we'll just call it something for right now, okay? So I'm going to copy this and drop to the next line, drop to the next line. That way I can just fill in the blanks kind of. So let's just start off with Google, right? And then we'll do uh, Yahoo. And then we'll do Bing. Because these are gonna be some search engines, okay? And then let's make sure that we put it to the correct address for Google and then Yahoo and then Bing. And you might, you know, some people might look at this and go, well, wait, why why couldn't I just, you know, use this one word, Google, Yahoo, Bing, because everything else about the addresses are identical? Well, let's say that you were picking something where everything wasn't just, you know, HTTP colon slash slash and then the name dot com. Let's say it was something more complex. Um, then you would, you would definitely need something that would be uh, differentiating itself. But let's just say, for the sake of it, to, to illustrate a point, let's say that this name Google wouldn't be so easily replaced here if we were to try to build it in a string or something. Let's say that instead of Google, let's call it Big Brother. That's how I feel about Google. It's Big Brother. Okay. Um, and then I guess Yahoo would be, I don't know, oldest brother. Because... You know, if you think about it, we could be a little bit snarky here and be kind of stupid. And this would be youngest brother. I don't know. I'm making this up as I go along. But now you can see distinctly that this address now has no bearing whatsoever on what is in this in this key name. OK, so now we've got this links array. And let's say that down here, we don't want to have to hard code stuff. We want to just be able to pull from, a, from an array because maybe the array is being pulled from a database. In our example, it's not. We're building it right here in the page. But maybe it's being pulled from some other location. And we have no control over how that list gets populated. So we don't want to hard code stuff in. So let's just do something really simple. I'm, I'm not going to get rid of this stuff just yet, OK? I'm just going to drop it down. And if you want to think about it, it would just be where the options are going to go that we would want to run the loop because that's where we're going to want to, you know, loop through and create these things that are repetitive. So I'm going to put some PHP tags here and I'll put the ending tag. And then the first thing that I want to do is start my for each because we're going to use for each loop. All right. And uh, if you want to think of this, I'll, I'll just put the ending right there, but let's go for each. And we're going to say uh, the name of that was uh, links array. So it would be links as, and then key is to value. Let's just do something simple. We'll say key is to uh, value. Those are going to be my temporary variable names, except I need to spell that right. Value. Okay. And if you want to look at what my keys and values are, you could either keep this as key is to value and then use the key variable and the value variable inside the loop. You could do that. Or you could think of it as <clears throat> where the key is like uh, the name and the value in this case is the um, URL. 
right? So you can see the point I'm trying to make is that you can totally make up whatever whatever you want that goes here, all right? Okay, so anyway, now I've got my loop and I need to be able to have stuff that goes inside of the loop, right? Well, this is where you would put this repeating stuff, this option value. So I'm gonna copy this, but what you're gonna notice is that I'm still inside PHP and so it's gonna look funny, it's not right. It doesn't recognize that as PHP. So what I need to do is I need to go up here and I need to put my ending tag for PHP right there. And then I need to open it back up again right here so that I can complete the last curly brace for that loop. And so now what you see is I've got this option, value equals blah, blah, blah. Okay, well now I don't really need these options anymore because I'm starting to build this properly, okay? Oops. All right, and if you wanna look at what needs to go here, well, remember we decided that the value was the URL, right? And this is where having these temporary variable names um, actually sort of makes sense as to what they really are. It's kind of helpful when you're trying to figure out where to put them in the loop sometimes. So uh, the value right here is where that would go. So I'm gonna change that with some PHP tags and I'll go here and I'll say echo URL, right? Just like that. And then where it says Google right here, I want that to actually echo out the name. So again, I'll put PHP tags and I'll say echo name. Well, the name variable, okay? And so now I have my form still. I'm gonna hit save. And let's go just make sure that everything looks okay over here. Hit refresh. And you see now I've got big brother, oldest brother, youngest brother, right? Super snarky, yes, I know. Let's say oldest brother, we hit submit. And then if you want, we can inspect the page and see what it submitted. And by going to network and Oh, actually, let's submit that again. There we go. And then I can click on this, and then down at the bottom, I can look and see what it submitted for the form data. And you can see that Big Brother gives us google.com and submit gives us submit. Okay, so that's working. All right, I'm gonna close this up. That is working. Now, what I also, maybe you might also want to do is look at this and go, okay, well, here, let's just click up here in the URL so that it doesn't resubmit the form and let's just hit return and then it reloads the page without any post data being sent. And if you wanted to double check that, you could go down here to inspect element and you see that in fact, uh, none of it, nothing has been sent. Okay, so no method, right? Um, so, if we wanted this not to always default to an option that is going to result in something, then what we could do is come down here inside of the select form and we could go not inside the loop because we don't want that to be inside the loop. We could just add an option form or, or an option element right here before the, uh, before the actual um, loop, that's one option, we could do that. Another option would be to just go up here inside of this links array and you could add one that was gonna be the default. Let's do that. Let's just say we're gonna have a default one. And I need a comma there. And we're gonna say, choose or pick your poison, something like that. I can't spell right now. Okay, pick your poison or pick the brother or I don't know, something I'm totally stupid right now. Um, and then what you wanna do is you want it to be an empty value here. So you could just leave that as an empty string right there for the, for the address, right? It won't do anything. Um, and that's one option. So if I hit save, then that's gonna be the first thing that shows up. I can hit refresh, whoops. No. And I made a typing error. This is not supposed to be a dash. That's supposed to be an equal sign. Save that. Let's hit refresh again. Okay. And then it says pick your poison. All right. And then now if I were to hit submit, it, it would actually still submit 
form data. So if you wanted to double check, let's do that again. We'll hit submit, go to network. You see that it did do the post method and it submitted an empty value for engines. So it's not gonna actually, it wouldn't send me somewhere if I had that redirect me. Um, but that's good because we just want that to be blank. Now, uh, and then that way it always will uh, start off here as blank. Or if you really don't want it to say pick your poison, the other thing that you could do if you prefer is you could also have this be empty. If I hit that, it could be two completely empty strings and then I come over here and I hit refresh and then you see it starts off with nothing. Okay, or you could have like dashes or something like that, right? You could, you could see, you've seen people do this, right? You do something like that and then you get to pick, okay? All right, now what I want to do is I want to show you how you can get this information um, to, you know, refresh on the screen. So at the very top of the page, before the doc type, okay, what you're going to do is come up here and put some PHP tags. And inside of them, we're going to put a conditional statement that tests to see if the post variable has been set, All right? Because remember, post is just um, a super global array. So let's go is set. And then inside of that, we'll say post, All right? And then I want to see if post is set. If it is set, then what we can do is we can do a print r to inspect post. And we can see what's inside that element, <clears throat> or excuse me, what's inside that array. Like that, okay? So if post is set, then print r on post. And then if you wanted to see it, so that it wasn't all jammed up weird. You could put some little pre tags around it. And th this isn't really, I mean, it's not proper formatting because it's before the doc type, you know, that we're doing this, but we're just doing this for testing right now. So let's hit save. Let's come back over here. And then instead of hitting refresh, cause I don't want to try to, I don't want it to resubmit the form. I'm just going to go up here and then in the URL, I'm just going to hit enter. And then you see what it does is it's saying, oh, okay. It's, it did submit something. Well, that's weird. Well, the reason for that is because post just, it's a super global array. And anytime you literally enter something, there is going to be something that's either a post or a get. Um, and so is set post will still evaluate to be true whether or not you submitted something or not. And so I wanted to show you that because you might think, hey, that should be something that I could use. It's not necessarily something that's safe to use if you're trying to, to really test. I, and the reason I want to show you that is because it gives me an empty array. Even though we didn't hit the submit button and all we were doing is just not even refreshing the page, we were just going to it for the first time. Um, so I want to show you that you can't use that when you're trying to check and see if a post uh, form was sent. Instead, what you would want to do is say, if it's not empty, because you could see right there in front of you over here that the array exists, but that it's not, but that it is empty. Okay. And so we want first to see if post is not empty. So let's save that and let's come back over here. And now don't hit uh, submit or refresh or anything. I'm just going to click that again. And you see, it sees that it's, um, that the post is empty. All right. And we're, we're saying, hey, if it's not empty, then print it. Okay. So let's just double check. Now we can submit this. We'll tell it youngest brother submit. And then in fact, once we submit it, you see that it goes ahead and it inspects the array for us which is kind of cool. And you can see that it's saying that the key is engines for the submitted uh, URL of bing.com and then the submit key for the submit value on the button, for the submit button, okay? So in the next uh, demo in the series, what I wanna do is show you how you can use this information, get it off the screen and actually use it for redirection to, to go to that address.